So today we're talking about iron in infancy. One out of two cases of anemia in children is actually accountable to iron deficiency. So where are we getting this iron from and what are the food products that we can actually get enough iron to make sure we're building enough hemoglobin. Uh, you have everything in order, you have done all the shopping that you need to do and you think now it's go time. Mm. And then it comes and it comes at you like a whirlwind and you realize there are so many other things you have not prepared for. It's Dr. Rain, aka the hip hop doctor, aka the pediatrician with biceps. And today we've got another amazing episode talking to you guys about iron. Now this might seem a bit like a repeat, but it's different. And it's different in the sense that we want to talk to you guys about iron absorption in kids. So when your babies start to actually feed solid foods, where are they getting this source of iron? Remember from the last episode when we sat with Dr. Stephanie Wakaba and award-winning artist Fee, we talked about how iron is important in pregnancy and how it prevents anemia in your growing infants. When we talk so, about things like iron and we talk about why is it that you have to breastfeed or give your child only breast milk only up like up to at least minimum six months yeah. before you start introducing other foods? Mm. It's because as you all your nutrition mm. you take, as the foods that contain iron, your supplements, mm -hmm. like iron is, is very important because it's a very big building block in your in your blood and, and compromises of your compromises of hemoglobin mm. your hemoglobin which is your red blood cells is mainly iron mm. so that's why mm. it's it's so important and as your breast milk as time goes on your breast milk changes mm. so your levels of iron go yes. start going down and then at six months we need to we need to supplement so today we're talking about iron in infancy so let's just recap remember when i talked to you guys about exclusive breastfeeding up to six months from six months your iron level the iron levels in the breast milk really really goes down so then that becomes a problem now where are your kids going to get enough iron now here's some facts about some fun facts about iron maybe not fun but actually alarming is that one out of two cases of anemia in children is actually accountable to iron deficiency. So where are we getting this iron from and what are the food products that we can actually get enough iron to make sure we're building enough hemoglobin. And remember the last episode I told you about hemoglobin and how it's important in transporting oxygen in the body. And we also touched about anemia. So with those statistics, remember that the best source to get iron is in your meat. You have different kinds of iron. You have your heme iron, which is easily absorbed, and you have your non-heme iron that is usually in plant proteins. So good sources of iron is always going to be your meat. Any kind of red meat has a really, really good source of iron in fish, in chicken, and also in things like uh, different crustaceans such as seafood, oysters, and stuff like that. So when you're having that kind of iron, it's much, much easily absorbed and it gets into your system and it, you know, you build up your hemoglobin. But now you have other kinds of iron, which is your non-heme iron, which is in the plant foods. So, but they exist in very, very small quantities and it's harder for them to be absorbed by the body and actually build up your iron and your hemoglobin levels. So here's the thing, people. I wanted to make it very, very simple for you guys to understand that there are types of food that contain iron and there are other kinds of food that will actually inhibit iron absorption. Now, let's talk about the foods that inhibit iron absorption. Number one, surprisingly, cow's milk. When you give your child too much cow's milk, they get full too quickly. And it's also been shown that it actually um, diminishes the absorption of iron. So when your baby is taking and drinking a lot of cow milk, packet milk, you're doing 500 mils to one liter a day, they're not going to absorb enough iron. Another thing that also inhibits iron absorption when you're trying to get it from your diet, things like tea. So I know this is common in African countries, especially Kenyans, um, to have tea in the morning with your bread. So tea can actually minimize that. And there's something we call 
phytates, yeah, phytates, polyphenols. These are things that inhibit um, iron. So polyphenols, things like tea, coffee, that's polyphenols. And then you have your phytates, which are things like cereal. So imagine that your porridge, your sorghum, your millet, all these things and your grains like brown rice can actually inhibit iron absorption. So you have to be very careful with the way you play with your foods and making sure that we encourage kids to have enough iron. Because remember from six months, you don't get enough iron in the breast milk. But iron in your breast milk is the best iron because it's so easily absorbed and it goes directly because the others take some time. Like for example, the, the non-heme, 60 to 75% of it is not absorbed. And if it stays in your gut, imagine this it can actually lead you to develop um, all kinds of pathogenic bacteria in your gut and our gut is so important for our immunity now there's different type of bacteria that will actually enhance your absorption of iron and these are called prebiotics now prebiotics are present in human breast milk but they can also be present in different things so when you're introducing your stuff make sure that you're not including um, things like cow's milk if uh, you get to a point where you've introduced formula some formulas do have uh, prebiotics but you want to have as much prebiotics to improve or increase your iron absorption now i know i've been babbling i've been talking a lot about iron this and that but in essence breast milk is the best place to get your iron in the first six months of life breast milk is absolutely essential you'll get all your iron and it will be absorbed immediately after six months we have to be very very careful people so look for your iron rich foods but remember there are also foods that can inhibit your iron and when you don't have enough iron in your in your body you get anemia you can it can lead to growth development issues and also brain development issues so you want to have as much iron as possible and how it can be absorbed Anyway, I'm meeting up with Anubaba and he's going to tell me all about his experience with complementary feeding, which is feeding at six months. And we'll talk about how he's been getting iron in his baby's body or maybe he hasn't. So stay tuned. Always stay tuned to Ask Dr. Rain. Follow us on our socials, Ask Dr. Rain on Facebook, Dr. Rain Instagram, and we'll be there to answer all your questions. Peace. Yo, what's good, people? Welcome back to Ask Dr. Rain. Now that we know about iron absorption, what foods have iron, what foods inhibit iron absorption, I'm going to speak to a new baba. His name is Dr. Gray. He happens to be an ear, nose, and throat resident at the University of Nairobi. And he also happens to be a new dad. And his baby has just started feeding, well, maybe for the past few months. And I want to know about his experience with the foods that he's been giving his baby. Dr. Gray, Karibu man, Nyaja bro. Thank you, thank you, thank you You're for good? having me on. I'm good, Kabisa. So this thing, we've been talking about it for a while, where I was like, I'm really interested in talking to dads. Mm -hmm. I've been giving the limelight to the, the ladies. I've empowered the women. Mm -hmm. Now it's time to talk about boy child yeah. and how this experience is, especially for the African dad, because my show is all about African stories, but health wise. Mm -hmm. Fatherhood, how was that for you, bro? Oh, man, it comes at you like a train. Yeah, um, you think you're ready, uh, you have everything in order, you have done all the shopping that you need to do, and you think now it's go time. Mm. And then it comes and it comes at you like a whirlwind and you realize there are so many other things you have not prepared for. But uh, it's been the most rewarding uh, thing that I've ever done in my life. It, mm -hmm. is, it is amazing. Um, and then just seeing your young one grow from, from one step to the next, to the next, to the next, it's ki it kind of reassures you that, okay, you're on the right track, you're on the right track. But through it all, you have very little clue uh, about what to do and how to do it. But then when you see that the child is fine, then you get some some confidence and some reassurance that you're on the right track. So, so far, I have enjoyed every bit of it. Okay, so let me put it this way. Um, from the time you, you, you knew you're going to be a dad, your wife is pregnant, but now when the baby came, now the baby is born. 
was there like a reality check you're like oh crap it's real i have a mini me mm -hmm. yeah <laughs> it's it, it comes with very many mixed feelings so first of all um you feel like you're not qualified um mm. of course you're not qualified to be a father but then at the same time you feel like you need to step up your your game and when when the baby gets there you know they they're entirely dependent on you so you quickly have to check in um, into superman mode uh, mm. what does this kid require you go get the kid whatever they require what does the mom require you go and get whatever the mom um, requires so it 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 is it is um how do i put it like it it just comes at you and as you go on is as um, as you go on that's when you keep learning from step to step um uh, initially when the baby actually arrived for me i was just happy and then at the same time i was anxious because mm. i'm now like he's now here mm. and unfortunately for us at that time the baby came and uh, he was unwell he had uh, neonatal jaundice Wow. Yeah, so that came with <laughs> you know you you meet your little John this as a doctor so many times but then when you're the other end of things as, as a patient the game is completely you have to different. Get admitted because maybe, maybe many people don't know your natal jaundice is the yellowness um, that comes when the baby is born. It can be physiological, it can be normal, but sometimes when those levels, uh, the bilirubin, which causes the yellowness of the skin and also in the blood, goes too high, sometimes we have to do other interventions and admission is one of them. Mm -hmm. So we were admitted. admitted. We were admitted. We were in hospital for about two weeks. Wow. Um, so the first time we admitted immediately after delivery after like two days um the baby started st uh, turning yellow it's the mother who noticed first for me i was like yeah it's the lighting and whatnot this baby needs to go to proper natural light then we can say for sure but mm. then the doctor came in and said no the baby has jaundice mm. so we, we stayed in hospital for like five days and then wow. we were discharged for uh, for two days the doctors like go home for 48 hours mm. then come back and do a check uh, bilirubin so mm. it was on the rise so it was like hey guys i have to admit you after that we were in hospital for another one week which was the longest time of my life um baby was also not adding weight it was on like on a downward trajectory and uh, the mother had uh, challenges with breastfeeding because of all that stress and everything yeah, yeah. so for it the was the first time yes yeah. for the and it was her first time and everything so she had a lot going on uh but somehow some way we got through that um it was the toughest time of, of our lives so you see now that's what i was saying like you, you think prepare. you're ready yeah, yeah. you think you're, you're ready. ready you but put life. your your coins together like uh, we'll get admitted we pay for the delivery and everything mm -hmm. you bought your diapers you bought clothes you bought the baby coat everything you've painted the house or rather mm -hmm. the baby's room and everything and then now you know uh, you get a cuff ball um, uh, thrown at you and now quickly you have to switch and get creative you have to um, just find solutions at that mm -hmm. point and that is what fatherhood has been for me so far getting solutions mm. there's a problem you have to find solutions and most of the times you you don't even know what to do you've never had this experience before mm. so it's been um it's been uh, challenging but a learning experience altogether okay yeah so what i'm getting is fatherhood definitely comes with with a different kind of pressure um evolved because you know when you say father especially in an african setting you are the head of the house mm -hmm. you are the one who is expected to support the wife the baby um and not even just an african point of view when you, when you speak of religion and and most of us are christians mm -hmm. is that you know in, in christianity you're still the head of the house and things like that but sometimes we you find that some african fathers or they focus more on as long as I'm providing, mm -hmm. as long as I'm, the money is there for admission, yeah. the money is there for diapers, the money is there for whatever the baby needs, mm -hmm. ukosawa, and you just leave the rest of the upbringing to, to, to the, the wife. Mother. What's your take on that? Um, I, I, <laughs> personally, um, I have to admit that my father did it very differently and I kind of learned from, from him. Wow. My father was always present for us guys. Wow. My father never missed uh, our prize giving days, um, the, the PTA meetings, the open days when we used to discuss your academic affairs and your progress and all of that. Mm. Anything that required my father's presence, he was almost always there. 
So for me, I didn't have an excuse yeah. not to do the same for my son. Wow. And then now the stories from my own mother, she tells me that your father was always present. Like he would come from work, come, change you, wash you, breast, uh, nini, uh, wow. feed you and all those things. How old is your dad? Just, my, just so my, we can get this. <laughs> so that I know my the generation. Now, my dad is about 60 or thereabout. I don't know exactly. I just know he is the same age as uh, uh, Obama. Wow. That's Yo, salute to your dad. That's, that's really you, rare for that generation. It's, it's absolutely amazing. Amazing. So for me, one of the things I promised myself is that even if I, I, I might not be able to provide financially, I have to be present. Mm. And then I took advice from a couple of colleagues, good friends. Uh, you know, Dr. Obwaka, uh, Chris. Oh, yeah, Chris, yeah. Yeah, um, and he told me that this ch- time is going to be challenging for both you and the mother. And especially you as a doctor and as a resident, it's going to be challenging. But what you need to do is find one thing that will make sure that you always do for your son. Mm. So, uh, and the example he gave me is that at night, in the middle of the night when the baby wakes up, wake up, change the baby, and then give the mother a dry baby, at least a changed baby, to breastfeed. So in the in the beginning when our baby was still uh, breastfeeding, that's what I would do. Um, when the baby cries, I wake up, change the baby, nini, whatever the mother would require, I put around her, mm-hmm. and then give her the baby, she breastfeeds. Okay. And that worked um, uh, for quite a while. The other thing that I um, I chose to do was to wash the baby. So I used to wash the baby. Um, we used to, or, or rather, we wash him in the evening. So I would try as much as I can. If I'm home, I would be the one washing the baby. Mm-hmm. Um, or sometimes now the nanny would would wash the baby. And then now eventually, when we started the when we started the dream feeding. I'm the one who does the 10 p.m. dream feeding. So I go take the baby, a bottle feed, put him back um, in bed. Mm-hmm. Occasionally I'm on call in Kenyatta or something like that. Yeah, then I'm not available. Then the mother or the nanny would help with that. But if I'm home, that's that's my responsibility. And then now I would always create, try and create a day or two that I would just spend with my son, you know, hang around with him, play with him and, and everything like that. And I intend to do the same. That's um, amazing. You know, for the rest of yeah. uh, parenting and they say parenting doesn't stop. You never yeah. retire from parenting. Yeah. So that has been my role and I intend to also be there emotionally for him, reassure him, tell him he's doing well, exactly. tell him I love him. You yeah. know, some of those things that maybe our fathers never used to tell us. Uh, one of the other things that I learned from my father is my father always always used to um, reassure us and he'd always tell us that you guys are meant for greatness that whatever situation that you're in right now is only temporary where you're going is very very far and that has always carried me up to where I am, I always remember that my father told me that this is not meant for me. There's a step that is higher mm. for me. So I learned from the best. That's really the, I have you really no have. excuse. You I have really to be have. a very good father for my son. Yeah, you really have because I was actually looking for for African cliches that I would say, you know, you're actually supposed to do this, you're supposed to be this supportive. Because all those things you've mentioned, mm-hmm. number one, you realize that more other than just financially supporting the wife and the family, mm-hmm. you're actually supporting and encouraging your wife mm-hmm. to breastfeed. Because breastfeeding is, is a community thing. Yeah. When your wife is supported, when she can get extra sleep, when she knows that I don't have to wake up, mm-hmm. my husband has woken up, my child will be fed so that I can sleep longer, yeah. it means that she'll have better milk production. And we all know about exclusive breastfeeding up yeah. to two years, it's, it's really important. So like that, you supported the other thing is child psychology Mm -hmm. skin to skin is very important the fact that you wake up at night you you hold your baby you also give it to the mom it's so important it improves actually the child psychology Mm -hmm. and wait and your child will grow up actually with in a in a better environment and emotional support Mm -hmm. so you're providing everything you're providing emotional support you're providing financial support Mm -hmm. you are supporting your wife so that she can be able to breastfeed Mm -hmm. rest that bond is what is needed to create a really healthy growing adult because those tiny things Mm -hmm. and i remember um there's a book you gave me to read atomic habits so those those tiny things Mm -hmm. make such a big difference about the health outcome so your 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 child is going to grow up in a very healthy mental state and also just healthy like in terms of physiological health and just Mm -hmm. being uh able to to fight different diseases from all the support you've given so i think for me is to say yo dr gray we need to have more dads like yours um that are more attached and i 
this is a conversation that I want to continue having. Um, I'm going to have a forum with new dads about African fathers and how they're changing the narrative. You're changing the narrative. I hope more fathers are getting inspired and you're inspiring so many people, even on your YouTube page. You've, I've known you from when we were young yeah. junior doctors, wild as, <laughs> as, as if, and then now you've, you've just grown into this very mature, very informed, very wise guy. And, and I'm absolutely, absolutely sure you're going to pass that down to your child and big oh, up wow. to you. I'm, thank you, I'm thank you to for you your kind words. For being thank you, thank the real new baba. Uh -huh. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Stay at it. I, I'm, I'll come to you tips when that day comes. Yeah. yeah. When you when you want to give when I need advice from from the guys who have gone through it. Yeah. So thank you so much for coming on the show. Asante I just wanted me. to get your perspective on you know being a new dad. Mm -hmm. You know, and now I've heard about the feeding, so I'm I'm very happy about the feeding. Um, sorry to hear about that with the challenges with breastfeeding but that's why i'm doing this and making people informed i look forward to uh, having more and further discussions thank you so thanks dr gray I new baba his name is dr gray if you're an african dad and you're listening and you feel that you're you're too cool to change diapers you're too cool to feed your child you are only doing harm to your baby please Let's get more involved as African dads. Let's give them that emotional support. Let's support the family as much as possible. Changing diapers, feeding your baby doesn't make you less of a man. In fact, it just makes you a better man. You've heard it first. Like this is not scripted, nothing at all. It's amazing what being raised by a good father and a, a good man can do. This guy is going to pass it down to his baby and it's going to become generational wealth and health. Ask Dr. Rain, we keep it 100 all the time, true African stories. Follow us on the socials and till next time, peace out. <laughs>